Today, we're gonna build this really awesome binding tower, which will hold the router nice and square as I route the binding and purfling channels on my acoustic guitar build. Stick around, this one's fun. What is going on? Welcome back to Home Built Workshop. I hope you're having a great day. We are working on yet another step that's going to move us forward in the building of this acoustic guitar. However, there's one small problem. And that problem is that I need to route a binding channel that is square to the sides, but yet the top as well as the back have a radius to them. So by just running a router along the edge, the router is gonna be tipped and I need a way to hold this router nice and square to the sides without really being affected by the radius on the top and the back. Now there are several suppliers online that you can order a binding jig from, but if you're familiar with them, they can get quite pricey and they don't even come with a router, so you have to add that cost on top of it. And I know you know how we roll around here. If we can build something ourselves, save us a bit of money and get something that's in many cases better than what you can purchase on the market, we're gonna do it ourselves. Before we get started with today's project, I just wanna let you know really quick that what I'm gonna be building is version one of the binding tower. It's gonna be sort of a prototype, I guess we'll call it. Once I put this through its paces and make some modifications, changes, improvements, whatever needs to be done, I do have plans to release a set of drawings, STL files, dimensions, part numbers, sources, all of that good stuff so that you guys will be able to build your own. That will be coming eventually in the future, like I said, as I make changes to this. So for now, let's build the prototype. I spent quite a lot of time researching a lot of the features and designs of the binding towers that are out there on the market. After ordering up quite a few bits and pieces, here's our binding tower. Some assembly required. This is a three by five inch angle. We should be able to get two, possibly three jigs out of this. First, we need to cut down a strip of this that's four and a quarter inches wide. Now ideally, you would cut this down on like a metal cutting bandsaw. We don't have one of those around here. So a word on the street is that you can cut aluminum on a table saw. Now I have done this before on thinner materials, never on something that's a quarter inch thick. Let's see what happens. I made these cuts by making several passes, raising the blade slowly in between. Perfect. Now I need to begin laying out where to drill the holes to mount the bearings. I'm gonna use some Sharpie to blacken in the areas, that way I can scratch a light line with my calipers. Layout fluid would be the best choice here, but I don't have any, and Sharpie works just great. With the mounting holes drilled, I'll tap these for quarter 20 bolts. To get rid of the Sharpie marks, I just use a little acetone on a rag. It takes it right off. Well, that takes care of the four holes where we will eventually mount the bearings. Now we need to focus on the wider portion of the angle and create the mount for the router, as well as some holes for the little donut, we'll call it. I'm building mine for use with the Bosch Colt router. It has a specific mounting bolt pattern that I'm going to use. If you're using a different laminate router or trim router, it's gonna work just fine. Just know that you'll need to use whatever bolt pattern your particular router has. You just have to lay it out accordingly on your piece. Time for some more Sharpie. And this is why we do a test fit. And really, I probably should have just drilled the front holes and double checked because my back set of holes are in the wrong place. <laughs> Who's done that before? Show of hands. Oh, just me? Oops. <laughs> I double checked my measurements and my measurements on my plan is correct. I somehow just marked them in the wrong spot. Not really gonna be a big deal. 
because I'll just redrill the holes up a little bit from where they are and it's gonna work out just fine. These are just a through hole. They're not threaded for anything and I drilled them slightly oversized for the M4 screws. That way I have a little wiggle room. The back ones will just have a little bit more wiggle room. <laughs> Mistakes are proof you're trying, right? I've heard that before. After drilling the holes in the correct place this time, everything seems to line up and I can attach the router base. There we go. Problem solved. We'll just call those strategic weight reduction holes. Before I drill out the center hole, I want to double check and make sure my measurement is on. So I've got a V bit in the router. I can just drop that down in the base and it lines up exactly with my center point. I don't know if you can see that. So now we'll drill the center hole. I double checked the size of my binding bit and I determined that for me, a 7 8 hole saw is gonna give me plenty of room. So that gives us the center hole where the router bit will stick through the jig. Now we just need to drill the four holes that'll attach our little plastic donut. Now if I hold up the donut, it looks like my layout lines are correct, but to help me out with that, I've created this little drill guide, which has also a 7 8 pin, I guess we can call it, that will align with the center hole, and then I can either mark or drill the holes with this in place. These holes are getting drilled out so that I can tap them with an 832 tap. Don't grab those little shavings, no matter how badly you want to, until the drill bit has completely stopped turning. Otherwise, slices from those little shavings hurt really bad. Well, that's the last hole we need to drill before we can start some pre-assembly. But before we do that, I wanna take a file and lightly clean up these edges just to make sure there's no sharp little burrs or anything on there that's gonna slice us later on. The first piece to install is gonna be my little 3D printed donut. This controls the height of the bit as we route the binding channels. And now to install the bearings that will ride in our aluminum extrusion. And this is where it gets kind of cool. At least I think. The key to this outside of this V-groove bearing is this eccentric bushing. This bushing goes into the bearing like that. And once we install the bolt and our aluminum spacer, now when we thread this in, before you snug it down, you can actually use a wrench and turn this eccentric bushing, which will adjust the tension and how tight the tolerances are between this bearing and the aluminum extrusion. This is what allows us to take any slop out of the mechanism and make sure that it runs true and straight. There's our first movement. For right now, I'm just using these little M4 thread hex bolts, really. I'm gonna keep an eye out for some screws that I can eventually recess down in here. Right now, this is all I have, and I think it's gonna work for what we're trying to do at the moment. And there's really the majority of our carriage. Now that we have our router base mounted, our bearings are in place, this thing slides up and down nicely. Now really we need a way to mount this to the workbench. We can't necessarily just leave it in the vise. Although I guess that could be an option if you had a vise positioned in the right spot. We need some sort of a base to mount this rail to. Now there's a couple designs out there that just use a little triangle extruded bracket. And while I imagine that works fine, I've never used one so I can't personally say. 
To me, it looks like there's a lot of opportunity for side-to-side -side movement. I think that triangle bracket keeps it rigid front to back, but I don't know how well it is side to side. Again, it may be just fine, but I want to use something that at least seems to me that it's going to be a little sturdier. Also keep in mind that we're going to cut this later. I just don't know where to cut it yet at this moment. For the base on my jig, I decided to try something that's meant specifically for this rail. This has a nice wide footprint. There's plenty of options to secure this, and there's even some threaded holes on either side where you can install some set screws to be able to square this up side to side. I think this is going to be really sturdy. We'll mount our extrusion in here so that the router hangs over this side, and this is going to give us a lot of stability, and I think this is going to work really good. One of the other complaints that I've heard about other jigs that are available on the market is that there's no stop. There's nothing to stop the carriage from going all the way down and possibly plunging your router bit into your workbench top. Well, since all of this material is down here, it kind of has its own built-in stop, so that could never happen. There is one thing I'm not 100% sure of yet at this time, and that is if this actually goes down far enough. There's a possibility that this may be keeping the carriage from going down far enough to contact the guitar body. I feel like it's gonna be okay, but until we build the holder for the guitar body, we won't really know for sure. So I guess we gotta make a holder. I'm using my acrylic template to get the outside dimensions of my holder. We need some way to hold the instrument at a little bit of an angle since the body of an acoustic is slightly thinner at the neck end. We can't just lay it in place because it's going to be higher down at this end than it is here. Enter more 3D printed parts. What I have here are two brackets. This one will get attached to our baseboard and this little chair shaped block fits in here and it is able to slide up and down. And once we add a cool homemade wooden knob, we now have a bracket that can screw down to our baseboard and it is height adjustable to make sure the body's sitting level to the router bit. The only other thing I need to do to these is add some padding to both the bottom as well as the back so that it hangs onto the instrument a little better and also protects it from getting scratched up. You could use just about any material for this padding Cork would be a great option. Here, I'm using leather. A little leather padded chair. Now with the brackets installed, we can take our acoustic body and set it in place. We can make our adjustments to the height as well as slide the brackets in and out. We want to set this up so it holds the body securely and the height here and here are both equal. We don't want it to do that. I think we're now ready to test fit this with the binding tower and see where we need to trim that rail off. It's right here at this moment that I realized that something's just not right. Well, there's something I didn't see before. If you spotted this earlier, kudos to you. I definitely did not notice before that this bracket does not hold the rail at exactly 90 degrees. I was all excited and I thought this was gonna work great. Well, after doing a little bit of investigation and a whole lot of thinking as to what might be going on here, turns out it's not this foot pad at all. There's enough slop in this joint down here that when you tighten these down, you can actually pull this from side to side. I guess that's maybe for 
allowing movement with whatever assembly you're using this on. I was easily able to fix that by shimming the bottom with some brass shim stock and that allowed me to get this thing perfectly 90 degrees to whatever surface we end up mounting it to. But I did discover another issue. I don't think we're going to be able to use this. The bit does not go low enough. This carriage is all the way down. It's resting on a portion of the foot pad, which won't allow it to go any farther down. I have the guitar body up as high as it would go. Now I could adapt the brackets to allow this to go higher, but I kind of like keeping it lower if at all possible. So I'm gonna have to change my plan here for the foot. I decided to give the aluminum corner bracket a try. Now I know that I had my doubts earlier, but I think if I build the plywood foot for this that we can secure it to, I think it's going to add some stability that some of the other designs may be lacking. Seems pretty solid. So right away I can tell this definitely goes low enough. Now we'll just determine about where we need to cut this thing off by roughly estimating the maximum height that I'm gonna need. Man, that works great. It is kind of scary though, not gonna lie. But it cuts nice and clean. Now let's do some assembly. I'm using a machinist square here just to make sure that as I tighten these bolts up, it stays nice and square. Before I install the carriage, I've cut a little piece of HDPE plastic. It's got a T-nut on there. We can slip that in place. And I'll use this as kind of a limit stop so that the thing can't come down if I were to slip or something and smash into the guitar. This would be adjustable. That seems to work really smooth, but there is a fair bit of weight from the router and the carriage that could potentially be pressing down on the top of the guitar. So in order to remove a little bit of that weight, I came up with a little secret weapon. So this is the little gadget that I came up with as sort of a top cap for our extrusion, but this is intended to take some of the weight off of the carriage. Really, just some 3D printed parts that house a constant force spring. This thing, by design, automatically retracts. This is going to get installed in our top cap. Then we attach the end of the spring to a hole that I drilled and tapped on the back of the carriage. So now when we add the router, the jig still stays down, so it's gonna sit nice and level on the guitar body, but it's not quite as heavy with all of this weight resting on, especially the soft spruce top. So when we're ready to use this, we can just set it in place, clamp it down. You could also install some inserts in whatever table you wanna use, or just drill some holes and secure this with some screws. For now, I'm just gonna clamp it. And this thing is actually rock solid. My table's not even as solid as this is. Well, that about wraps up the binding tower build. This thing is ready to be put to work, which if you wanna see this thing in action, make sure you stay tuned for the next episode of the Acoustic Guitar Build where I'm gonna be routing the purfling and binding channels. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss when that video comes out. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you next time. Uh -huh.